Hello guys, I'll be talking about uh, introduction on overcurrent detection as applied in transmission distribution system. Overcurrent detection is one of the simplest and least expensive forms of detection and is used to eliminate the fault component from the health system based on the use of excessive current to ensure accurate circuit breaker clipping. The relay must operate when the fault, magnitude of the fault current exceeds the uh, predetermined setting current. And the relay must energize the trip coil of the circuit breaker. Uh, this is the single line diagram of how the relay is coordinated in, in the system. So for example, this is the relay. The relay will take information through the CT or current transformation when there is a fault on the line. And then if the fault current or the information from the CT is um, higher than the uh, predetermined setting of the relay, then the relay will initiate a trip command to the circuit breaker. And then the circuit breaker will disconnect the, this network from the rest of uh, the network, for example, if there is another network in the past. So this is how it works. And this is the uh, tripping uh, scenario. If the magnitude fault current is outside of the circle, then it will operate. If not, it will remain block or if it remain unstable. Un un so if you look on this one as well, there is a relay evolution or development in the market. So for example, the first relay developed was back in 1900. It was called electromechanical relay. It works within through the induction disk, a rotating disk inside on here. Okay, then this uh, since 1960s, then another static relay become available, and then this become uh, advanced into digital relay in 1970s, and then since 1980s, a numerical relay or a digital relay has become dominant in the market. So this is what um, little mechanical relay, digital relay, static relay, and of course numerical relay in the laboratory. So relay technology has improved significantly from the first generation of the little mechanical relay or disk relay to the latest microprocessor numerical relay. Um, so now if we look at the standard IEC six zero three five five tripping characteristics, which is taken from the network protection and automation automation guide uh, relay, which is, uh, it is a document that available in internet. So everyone can have access to that document. So this is the basically uh, various IDM term, standard curve, inverse curve, extreme curve. And then this is current magnitude or multiples of the fault current. And then this is the relay response or the trip in time of the relay. So the overall characteristics is when the fault current is increasing, then the trip time of the relay become faster. At lower fault current, at lower fault current, then the trip time is slower. And similarly, this is the same as this one, but it is on using um, North American standard or yet which is applied in the ECA. So if you look um, on this table, this is reflects to this IEC 6850, sorry, IEC 60255, which is normally used in European IEC. Um, and then this is this table is uh, used for calculating or upload, um, plotting these curves, which is normally used in ESA. And this, uh, this parameters are just an explanation to the parameter defined in the equation. So for example, this is T is time of the relay, TMS is time multiply setting, and IR is I divided by IS, where I is the measured current during the fault, and IS is setting current or relay setting current. So the operating current of the relay 
is fast when um, the fault current increases and slower after when the fault current is low. So the actual performance depends on the setting current and the time of player, which is normally used to speed up or to reduce the fault current or the operating time of the relay. So let's consider for the following setting. We have tennis value of 1 PSM 100% and fault current varying from 1.2 to 100 amp at nominal current of the relay is one amp. So this is based on this setting, different curves, standard curves, which is the blue, the very inverse is the red curve, and the extremely inverse is the green, and a purple curve, a curve is the long, long inverse. So, so basically, this means that uh, at high fault level, then the trip time is faster, and at low fault level, then the trip time is delayed. And then another scenario is we can vary the TMS value. So from one to low, we can lower it to 0 0.2. So from one to 0 0.2, the aim of this one is, for example, at maximum at 100 amp for the current. Initially, when the TMS one was um, around 1.5, but when it is lowered to 0 0.2, we can look at the trip time become now. Uh, uh, around 0 0.2 second. So that means this is um, faster now. So the aim of the reducing the TMS value is to speed up the relay trip time. So we can use the TMS value for increasing or reducing the fault clear raster. Another example is we can also use, uh, vary the PSM from, for example, from 100%, we reduce it to various uh, cases. So say, let's have a look. If you look on this one at 100%, trip time was similar to what we were discussing. Um, but then when we reduce to 0 0.2 or 20%, then it is lower. Meaning that this is usually, we can play with the setting current. We can lower the setting current or, you know, based on the uh, specify value. So PSM is mainly used to adapt the relay pickup setting current. So the setting can be varied by considering the maximum loading current of the relay. So um, if we look at now on this discrimination by current and time, so if we consider we have identity curves for curves, and then we have an equation. So using this equation and this parameter provided, if, for example, in example one, if the primary fault current is 3,200 amp and the CT ratio is 400 to 5 amp, then the secondary current can be calculated, which is 40 amp, and O is 8 times the nominal current, where the nominal current is 5 amp, so 5 times Eight is forty, so that's that's it. what it means. Then we can add if and then if we are seeing pickup current is two times nominal current, which is two times five amp, then which is ten amp. Uh, we can find the operating time using a standard curve, for example, uh, when the TM is value of zero point two and one is provided. So we can just use this equation and then plug in the values, the input current of the secondary value is 40, the second current is 10. And then we can, if we put 10 as 0 0.2, then the trip time will be 0 0.99, which is one second. And then if we put the TMS value on here is one, then this will be 4.97 second. So in this case, again, the, we can look on overview on gradient of relays. So, uh, you know, gradient relay is an overcurrent protection is normally widely used in distribution system, especially on LV feeders or HV radial circuits. We also use in transmission system as a backup due to the difficulty in coordination. So if we look at the diagram on the right side, we have two relay on the single line diagram, which is radial network. Relay one, relay two, where relay one is set to operate first for fault on feeder one, and the relay two is designed to operate for any fault in, in feeder two or 
any fault and if you have one, uh, but if relay one um, failed, then the relay two will clear fault at a delay time. So if we look at on this one, this is uh, relay one trip time, and then this is um, relay two trip time. So relay two is normally delayed or uh, operates at delay time compared to relay one. And then this is, so the minimum gradient time between two relay is obtained using this equation. So this is the relay gradient margin. We can we can do we can calculate between the two relay. If it was fused relay, then we can use this equation. Of course, according to the IEC six zero two five five, we can plug in this parameter from this. So the overall grade margin between the two relay when it is lithium can carry legs, uh, zero point four second or four hundred millisecond and three hundred millisecond when the main carry day is issued. And the next section is how to assess the operating performance of overcurrent protection under the reduced fault level. Well, this is a bit of a hot topic at the moment because of the uh, penetration of renewable energy sources. So the fault level is uh, reduced substantially, as we know, we normally use in a low inertia technology. So the, the problem is, or the challenge is, how do we set overcurrent protection? as compared to conventional. So the conventional setting is okay because we used to have, we, we had um, a strong inertia or high fault input contribution from the uh, um, coal fired power station or, you know, the uh, strong generators. But now the problem is how do we achieve when the fault level is reduced? So for example, um, uh, normally, we normally set the uh, overcurrent protection uh, higher than the maximum loading current because this will ensure the relay will not trip for a uh, loaded circuit. So, say we have 400 kV and then we have fault at the remote end. Then, how do we calculate, say, for example, maximum short term loading for 400 kilo volt feeder is X, X amp or kilo amp? So we can calculate, of course, operating trip time of the relay using this formula. So let's say if at strong fault level, the trip time of this one is one second, because of the generator is strong. How about if we reduce this fault level? So if, for example, if we reduce this fault level in this generator, how do we calculate? Do we first calculate the TMS? Or how about the trip time? So will the setting okay? Yes or no? How do we assess? Well, if he asks, if he, if he uh, okay. So, and then how about the uh, operating time of the relay at different voltage levels and the varying fault level? And of course, how about the earth fault protection at various voltage levels? If you're interested um, to, to know or to learn more about this, well, please do contact me. So we discussed the uh, overcurrent protection is the simplest and cheapest form of protection. It is mainly applied in distribution system, and sometimes as a backup transmission system, depend, of course, the, the different country have different protection policy. Uh, IDMT curve or relay has uh, multiple setting configurations so that um, can be set based on different curves, depend on their application. And then of course, grading of overcurrent protection is provided in case, you know, uh, the trip for uh, upstream and downstream as a backup as well. So the, uh, and over, overview setting of overcurrent relay and the default current is briefly discussed. Okay, thank you.